Hey guys, we're back again. It is uh, Tuesday, March 24th, but if you're watching this, it's probably Wednesday, March 25th. I'm here with Verna again. She's doing well, um, making her play with her tail. Uh, we're going to jump into our main curriculum now. I hope you were able to access Assignment 1, Staying Informed in the COVID-19 Era and got that done. I just wanted to review a couple more uh, technical points in case you didn't get them in the email. Um, and I've got those over on the whiteboard. Do you want to say hi to the kids, dear? There's my wife. <laughs> Doing work. <laughs> Doing work. Shopping for ukuleles. <laughs> All right, so here are a couple technical points. Um, just to reiterate this, I will be giving daily assignments that you can access through the learning modules in Schoology. It'll be about 30 minutes of instruction and 30 minutes of an assignment. You can access them on your own time, so there's no Google Hangouts, so you don't need to worry about that school schedule that Mr. Grant sent out, for this class at least. And accessing and doing those assignments counts as your attendance for the day. So please make sure you stay on top of that. Um, if you would like to do a Google Hangout, of course, you can send me an email or a text and we'll set that up. I'm happy to do that. And super important through all of this, if you're confused or if you have feedback for me or need anything, please reach out. Um, we're kind of building the plane as it's in flight, so all of your feedback is super helpful. And at that, we're going to go into the computer. Bye, Berna. Hey guys, welcome to In the Computer. Um, we're going to start off on our chemistry curriculum, which we'll do for the next few weeks. Uh, starting off with something we actually did touch upon last semester when we were doing nucleosynthesis and fusion in the sun. Um, it's, that is uh, properties of atoms and subatomic particles. Um, so my goal for you from this lesson would be to calculate properties of atoms and subatomic particles for an element. And remember that this is a recap of things we did last semester. We did it last semester because um, atoms, elements, are created inside stars through a process called nucleosynthesis or nuclear fusion. Um, so we talked about sizes of atoms and properties of atoms last semester. Um, we're just going to recap that today. So first off, um, elements are the purest form of matter. They cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Atoms themselves are the microscopic and indivisible building blocks that make up the elements of the universe. Um, so we like to say that atoms make up elements. Atoms are the very small Legos of the universe. And I say indivisible here. Um, we can split atoms um, as seen in nuclear reactors, um, a process called fission, um, but it's very difficult to split atoms. So we do say they're indivisible uh, mostly. and with that said, one subatomic particle that can be removed very easily is the electron, and we see that a lot in chemistry as we go through chemical reactions and bonding. Um, all elements are arranged systematically on what we call the periodic table of elements. Here's a periodic table. Uh, as you go to do your assignment today, you're going to make sure you need, you're going to make sure you have access to a periodic table. So if you Google periodic table, you'll find a bunch, maybe even print one off. So, what are the things that make up atoms? We call those subatomic particles. All atoms are made of subatomic particles, and there's three that we're really concerned with in, in chemistry. Um, the three particles that make up atoms are, first, the proton, which has a mass of one atomic mass unit, or Dalton, um, and a charge of plus one. So we say protons are positive, they have a positive one charge. And they are fixed in place in the nucleus of the atom. So they're in the center in the nucleus, and they cannot move around um, relative to the atom itself. They are fixed there in the nucleus. The next subatomic particle is neutrons, which also have a mass of one atomic mass unit, but they have no charge. So we say neutrons are neutral, not negative, but neutral. Um, much like proton, they are also fixed in place in the nucleus of the atom. The protons and the neutrons give all the mass or most of the mass to the atom and they live in the center in the nucleus. And then lastly, very important in chemistry, is the electron, 
electrons have a mass of zero atomic mass units. Uh, it's actually about one two thousandth that of a proton. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just going to say it's so small it's insignificant. We'll call their mass zero. And they have a charge of negative one. Um, due to their small size and location orbiting outside of the atom, um, electrons are easily lost or gained by the atom. We like to say they're highly mobile. And that's how chemical reactions take place and how chemical bonds form. Uh, we have some properties of atoms that we like to talk about. The first one is the atomic number. The atomic number of the atom is equal to the number of protons and it determines the element. So for example, this atom up here has three protons. Uh, I know that's lithium because if I look on a periodic table, a lithium atom has an atomic number of three, which means it has three protons. Carbon always has six protons. If it's not got six protons, then it's not carbon. Next, we have the atomic mass or weight of an atom, which is equal to the protons plus neutrons in the atom. Um, those are the two particles that have mass. So here, I would say the atomic mass of this is six because it's got three protons and three neutrons. Here, the atomic mass of this carbon atom is 12. It's got six protons, six neutrons. Here's a picture I found of the uranium atom, which is huge. It's probably got an atomic mass of like 235 because you can see how large the nucleus is on that particular atom. And then lastly, the charge, which is a measure of how positive or negative an atom is, is equal to the protons minus the electrons in the atom. And remember that charge can be both positive or negative. If I've got more electrons than protons, my charge will be negative. If I have more protons than electrons, my charge will be positive. And if I have an equal number of protons and electrons, then the overall atom is neutral. Um, so here are some helpful equations that relate the subatomic particles to the atomic properties. So we're going to start by defining some variables. Let's let an equal the atomic number. AM equal atomic mass, C equal charge, P equal the number of protons, N equal the number of neutrons, and E equal the number of electrons. From that, we can write three equations that are super helpful when you go to do your assignment today. First one's very simple. The atomic number is just equal to the number of protons. The second one is that the atomic mass is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. And know that I can rearrange this if I need to. Say I know the atomic mass and I know the number of protons and I want to solve for the number of neutrons. And I would subtract P from each side and I'd make a new equation that says AM minus P equals N. And then lastly, the charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons minus because electrons are negative. Again, I can rearrange that in any way I want um, if I know two things and I need to find the third. And then lastly, um, when it comes to writing out all of these properties of atoms, um, we have a systematic way of doing that. Um, it starts with having a symbol. Each element has a symbol which can be found on the periodic table. The first letter of a symbol is always capitalized. Note the M here in magnesium or the H here in helium. The second letter, if there is one, is always lowercase. So the E here in helium is lowercase. The G here in magnesium is lowercase. Um, but not all elements will have two letters. Carbon, for example, is just a capital C. And then when writing out the properties of an atom around the symbol, we always do it in the same order. The atomic mass goes in the top left. As you can see here in magnesium, 24 is the atomic mass because of where it is around the symbol. The atomic number goes in the bottom left. Here on magnesium, it's 12. And the charge goes in the top right if it's not zero. If it is zero, often we just leave the charge out. Um, so if you don't see a charge there, you can assume it's zero. And with that, I'm going to go to the whiteboard and do a couple examples for you. Um, relating to what you have to do 
in your uh, assignment today. And please uh, shoot any questions you have my way. The PD questions today will ask you to um, research and recall the difference between ion and isotope and cations and anions and all that business. So um, do that question if you'd like. And uh, keep on keeping on. Bye, guys. All right, we're going to go through a couple examples from that recent problem set about properties of atoms and subatomic particles. Um, just as a reminder, we have done this before last semester when we were studying nucleosynthesis in the sun. Um, I gave you three rows that I said we would do as a group. And very important, notice I do have a digital periodic table pulled up. If you just Google periodic table, you will find more than you know what to do with. Um, so make sure you have a periodic table for this. That is our go-to tool here. Um, with this first one, I've got carbon with a 14 in the top left and a 6 in the bottom left. Uh, the 14, I know, is the atomic mass. So I can plug that in. The 6 is the atomic number. I know that atomic number is always equal to number of protons. That's one equation that we can use here. A n equals p. I know that the atomic mass is equal to protons plus neutrons. So if I have an atomic mass of 14 and 6 are from protons, then that leaves 8 for neutrons. And then notice how there's nothing written in the top right here. That would be because the charge is zero. And so I can plug in zero for the charge, a neutral atom. Um, and if the charge is zero and I have six positives, then that means I must also have six negatives. So I have six electrons. And another way of thinking that is charge equals protons minus electrons. So I'm asking myself, six minus what number equals zero? That number would be six. So there's one example all completed out. Let's do another one. Here I've got a charge of plus one, 60 neutrons, and an atomic number of 47. Again, I know the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, so I can plug in 47 there. Atomic mass equals protons plus neutrons, so 47 plus 60 is going to be 107. And if I've got one more positive than I do negative, and I've got 47 positives, then I must have 46 negatives, 46 electrons, or going to this equation, 47 minus what number equals positive 1. Remember that charges can be negative. So putting it all together into the symbol over here, I check my periodic table, I notice that an atomic number of 47 is silver, AG, I put that atomic mass in the top left, put the atomic number in the bottom left, and the charge in the top right. Just a reminder on uh, Google Docs, if you want to superscript or subscript numbers, then the hotkey is control period or control comma. Uh, and here this last example, I know all of the subatomic um, particles and I want to find the properties of the atom. So if I have 15 protons, that is my atomic number. Protons plus neutrons tells me atomic mass. 15 plus 16 is 31. And charge is protons minus electrons. I have an equal number of positives as I do negatives. So no one's a winner here. It comes out neutral. And then putting it all together into a symbol I check my periodic table. Phosphorus has an atomic number of 15. All right, phosphorus. I add the 31, the atomic mass in the top left, the 15 in the bottom left, and I don't need to write anything in the top right because the charge is zero. And those are some examples done out. You have more to do in the table. Um, please shoot me any questions you might have. Thanks, guys.